Welcome everyone to this Zombicide second edition playthrough of Fort Hendrix Mission 1 Gathering the Braves. We're using everything from the Fort Hendrix box, so that includes the cards, the zombies and mission objectives. These are special story based cards, so give you a bit of narrative. Our first objective is to get all the survivors who start separated into the same zone. As soon as we have done that we can read note 1 and see what we have to do for the rest of the mission. But we do have Penny as a companion attached to Michelle for now and we have to keep her alive at all costs. I'm also using night rules, it's 10am currently but an hour passes after the end of every turn and it gets very interesting at night. So let's get into the game with Riley starting first but please leave me a like if you watch my playthroughs regularly as it helps the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, since they need to meet up the trio of Riley, Carl and Javier, I'll just move to the door closest to the others. Michelle moves with Penny into the other room, opens up the door with her crowbar and they walk out into the street. Wayne moves towards the door, picks up the pimp crate which contains a pattern 45 and moves into the street. with Marion searching and finding a fire axe before moving into the street also. With the survivors all together, note 1 is read. Pause here to read the narrative, but the goal is to take all objective cards until a new mission is found. So the round ends with the zombies spawn in. We have two fatties, two walkers with a shooter zombie and a three walker rush. The clock advances to 11am, so let's start with Riley once more. The first thing she does is smash open the door with her fire axe. So zombies spawn in the dark zones, and I started to understand the shooter zombies spawn better. <laughs> so a shooter zombie spawned with the fatty because it has line of sight on a survivor. That means I messed up spawning the last shooter zombie, so I just get rid of him. But anyway, a 4 zombie rush also spawns in and a runner spawns at the far end with a shooter symbol, which means one doesn't activate. But the one on the board shoots at the survivors, wounding Wayne. So Riley not being able to shoot just moves down the street. Carl has a rifle so fires all 3 shots at the walkers, getting 3 hits and killing three walkers, but creating a ton of noise. Javier is up next, he moves into the building, shoots at the walker and kills it, before picking up the pimp crate and finding a golden kakuri. Michelle and Penny then run into the house near the objective card. Wayne moves to assist Riley whilst Marion moves into the building to fire at the shooter zombie in the dark. Needing sixes, she fires twice and actually kills it. So at the end of the turn, the zombies all move towards the noise, with four walkers, an extra activation that doesn't go off and three walkers respectively spawning in, with the time of day now going to midday. So Riley starts, she opens the door with her fire axe, spawning in a shooter zombie and two runners. So Riley moves in and takes a swipe at the shooter, rolling a hit and killing him. Carl is on overwatch, so he shoots at the three walkers three times and kills two of them. Javier is up next, he whips out his newly found Kakuri and slashes at the fatty, killing it. Before walking into the dark and opening up the fridge. Pause to read the text, but anyway, Javier decides to attempt to take the weapon, unleashing three runners and a shooter zombie because of note 2. Once again, pause for the narrative. Michelle then needs to use her crowbar to whack the zombies around her and takes three swipes, but eventually both are dead. Mm -hmm. 
Wayne just moves into the house as the runners will hurt him otherwise. And lastly, Marianne moves into the Doctor Zone to help out Javier by swiping at the zombies. Needing some good rolls, she manages to drop Lucky and kill three of the zombies, but they are still <laughs> gonna get hurt. So all the zombies move, with Marion receiving two bites off the runner and knocking her down to one health. In spawn the new zombies, at first there's an extra runner activation that does nothing, then we have a one walker rush with two shooter zombies spawning in. With lastly one walker spawning in and activating shooter zombies, who shoot at Carl and knock him down to one health, with the time now at one o'clock. So Riley goes first and takes three swipes at the runners, but only manages to kill one. The heavily wounded Carl shoots at the zombies and kills a walker. Not wanting to go into the yellows yet, he runs into the building for assistance. Michelle searches through the corpse pile. Please pause to read the narrative, but it's not exactly useful, so Michelle goes to help out Carl. Wayne takes a swipe at the runner with his kabar, killing it before walking into the room with the wooden crates. It was at this point I completely forgot about poor Javier, so he used his Kakuri to kill the runner, found a prized katana as the special weapon, moved into the other room and handed it to Michelle on a trade. Marion is up last, she moves into the room and shoots at the shooter zombie, killing it she then opens up the other door. So all the zombies move, a fatty rush spawns in, a shooter zombie appears near the fatties and the shooter shoots into the survivors hitting Javier. Then in comes a runner who activates both shooter zombies, wounding Michelle and putting her on one health. Then in comes a walker rush with activating shooters, knocking Carl out and meaning he needs to be picked up to not die, with the clock moving to 2pm. Riley starts the round by moving in and opening the pimp crate. Inside she finds an army sniper rifle before cracking open the door. Carl is bleeding out, so Javier picks him up and moves out into the street, slashing at the walkers with his kukuri and only managing to kill one walker. Oh dear. At this point yes, I did realise I'd missed the zombie in the room, Whoops. but Michelle clears that up with her katana before moving out into the street and slashing up the rest of the walkers, putting her one off the yellows. Wayne checks the crates. Pause the video to see the narrative, but I don't think it's all that useful, so Wayne just moves near the door. Marion moves into the street, heals Michelle with her field medic skill, and then shoots at the runner, killing him before turning at the walkers and missing, but now she is one of the yellows. So at the end of the turn, the zombies all move towards the loudest noise, with one fatty rushing in, two walkers rushing in, and four walkers rushing in up top, and the clock moving to 3pm. So Riley starts by using her axe on the fatty, 
killing him before running back out into the street. Javier suddenly goes all Levi Godmoan on some walkers, slashing at all of them with his Kakuri and wiping all of them out. Going into the yellows, he then fires at the other walkers, but ends up missing. Michelle is up next, at first she opens up the door, discovering three runners, four fatties, two more runners and a dreaded abomination inside the house. Knowing they are in trouble, she moves inside and frantically searches only to discover a bottle of water. Wayne rushes into the street and fires at the zombies with his 45, killing two of the walkers. with Marion Oblast moving into the building, healing Michelle before firing at the runners, killing all three of them with some amazing rifle shooting after moving into the yellers. So the zombies all move towards the survivors and it's not looking good after Javier takes a wound off a runner putting him on one health. Then four runners spawn up top, eight walkers near the bottom, and lastly three rushing fatties, with the clock then turning to 4pm. So Riley goes first, firing at the zombies with her sniper rifle and killing both of them. Before moving up and opening the door, just in case they need an out. God mode Javier has it all to do, and after a little help from my youngest trying to grab my models to ruin the shot, he manages to wipe out everyone around him with his Kakuri and move into the house. Michelle trades her katana for Javier's Kakuri. I like to imagine a cinematic tossing of weapons to each other in slow motion. But anyway, she slashes at the fatties and kills all of them before moving into the objective zone, after going into the yellers. Wayne moves up to the walkers and kills them with his 45 before jumping into the building. Marion lastly tries to shoot the runners with her rifle, killing both of them with two shots. She then heals Javier and searches, miraculously finding a Molotov. 
Some people are going to say how convenient, but it was just drew out of the deck at random. There are like four or five in the Fort Hendrix deck after all. Anyway, the zombies all move with a five walker rush coming in from the top and then a dreaded extra activation for both walkers and fatties, basically meaning Riley is doomed. Riley, sensing her demise, shouts at Wayne to leave her before swinging her axe at the horde and only killing one walker. Javier whips out his new katana and slashes wildly at the horde of walkers, killing every single one of them and going well into the oranges, gaining himself a free ranged action. Michelle searches the cardboard boxes. Please pause to read the narrative, but anyway it basically means we can now escape. So she moves to the door and opens it up. Wayne runs to the exit crying as he's left Riley to die. And lastly Marion throws the Molotov at the abomination, setting the whole place ablaze shouting at Wayne for leaving Riley behind as she escapes. Of course, at the end of the turn, Riley is swarmed and munched upon. I hope they choked on her. But there is no point spawning in new zombies as everyone else is near the exit. So back to the player's turn, they run out of the door and head to Fort Hendrix. Hey everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like as that's what's most important and hopefully you'll stick around to watch more playthroughs.